Welcome back to the Seagull Mock Review as we return once again to Space Side for one of the all time classics. Mm, are we going on back? Glenn Levitt, 12 year old, it's back. But depending on where you were shopping, did it ever go away? Well, if you were in the States or our territory, then yes, it manifestly did to be replaced with the um, now infamous Glenn Fiddick. Oh, Glenn Fiddick, here I go again. Glenn Levitt, Glenn Levitt. Uh, Founders Reserve, which I still claim is not a terrible whiskey, but um, arguably no replacement for the original 12. And um, though we did we did touch touch on 12 a very long time ago, I suspect I was in um, a very unprofessional outfit out in the garden. I don't think I even gave it a score. So um, what better time? What better time to uh, review the Glenlivet 12? since it makes its yep. now triumphant return, at least to our territory. I hope it's back for you folks in the, uh, in the US. Uh, let us know if it's not. It's a bit of a travesty if you're still being starved, starved of the 12-year-old, because uh, we are no longer. Hmm. This is a modest 40% ABV bottling. Yes, sadly it didn't, um, it didn't learn much in its days in the wilderness. It hasn't approached us in any more of a craft presentation. It is still 40%. It is still coloured. It is still chill filtered. So we'll say that up front and then we will say no more about it. Um, as much as I would like to see, and I'm sure a great many other whiskey aficionados would love to see a unchill filtered 46% um, version of the Glenlivet 12. They do have options available in their Nardura selection. Uh, nowhere near as old or as balanced as the 12, but um, they'll get you they'll get you an insight, I suppose, as to uh, what the Glenlivet is like with the um, with the blinkers off, um, even if it's not quite the same as the 12. Consequently, you can see our reviews of those ones if you scroll hmm. scroll down a wee bit. I'm sure it wasn't that long ago. How do we break one. those? Um, we looked at the Sherry Butt version, and yeah. um, well, to my knowledge, we thought it was pretty good, but yeah. maybe just a little bit um, immature, as I want to call very, very young Sherry Mature whiskey. Watch out, Dave's going to have a blow. By the way, oh. Oh, wasn't he subtle? I didn't even hear it, and I'm <sighs> on the same table. Really? Apologies, it's allergic rhinitis for you. It's mostly seasonal, but it sticks oh, around. There we go. Mm. Um, what we did do, however, was review the uh, Founders Reserve, yeah. much to the much to the chagrin of all um, Glenlivet lovers yeah. out there. We didn't think it was that bad, but it could certainly do better. Let me glance at my cheat sheet here. Mm. Um, Dave rated that at 78, and I rated that an 81. So yeah. you'd call it, you know... No, not not out of the park baseball here. Pretty modest scores. Those are the scores this one's going to be aiming to beat, and I think it should do it pretty handily, having already mm. tasted the whiskey. But we'll um, we will um, give it its fair day, fair day in court. So it's it's uh, it's it's battle to lose, I suppose. So Glenlivet, twelve years old. What is there to say that has not already been said? Probably nothing. Um, unless you have some really, really deep insight into the nature of that distillery. I have driven past it, I've walked over the famous bridge, um, and it was closed because it was winter, so I kept on driving and went to um, Glenfiddich instead, where they gave me a um, lovely, if somewhat prescriptive tour, but that's uh, beside the point. I don't know a great deal about the inner workings of Glenlivet. I only know that it is one of the... Um, it's really one of the archetypes, along with its close competitor, um, Glenfiddich, as the as the space side whiskey, I suppose. Glenlivet is actually the older example. Um, that was the the Glenlivet Twelve was the first one to really popularise Scotch whiskey in the US way way back in the day. Um, Glenlivet. Fiddick, I should say. I'm going to do this on and on, so you just have to forgive me. That's what Dave is here for, to pick me up on these. If I really let one run and it starts getting embarrassing, he will, um, he will, he will um, shock me with a button under the table. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, in terms of initial influence, Glen Levitt really was the one that started, started the fire, the um, aged Scotch whiskey fire in the U.S., um, Glenn Fiddick really rode the coattails of that movement and has subsequently become uh, a little bit more popular in terms of sales. But we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't uh, take that away from the old Livet as it's a fairly important whiskey when you get into the history of it. But what's actually in there? That is a profoundly sweet nose. Yeah. There's light sugar syrup, mm, maple syrup, honey, 
it really is it really is the archetype of space side there yeah. is hmm, light here the honey there is white fruits apples and pears there's less fruit and spice so I'm come to associate it with space side well space side not a spicy region mm. um, there's just not so many spicy spicy flavors that come out of space side space side is a very I guess you'd call it a little bit clean. Other people mm. might call it bland, but um, clean Cause... and clear flavors. I guess it's Glen Farkless is so much of my go-to, I guess, when I'm... Yeah, Glen Farkless is... Space though things. it's Space Side, Glen Farkless being a 100% sherry-matured yeah, joint, that old uh, joint, it's very there. much an exception to the rule. Mm. Um, Glen Livet is very much the rule to the exception. Right. Glen, Far uh, Glen Livet is very, very, very typical of the style, and yeah. that style is... Easy drinking, light bodied, very, very clean, very pure spirit. Mm. There goes some of that fruit. <sighs> yeah, almost sort of ethereal. Mm. Think mango and pineapple, Phoebe, really acidic fruit, but uh, quite a gentle touch. Yeah, think, um, think tinned, tinned mango, tinned mm. pineapple, which is more accentuated as it gets older. Uh. But yeah, not, not complex and not made to be complex, if anything, made to be. Simple, made yeah. to be approachable, made to be everybody's whiskey. The very, very same philosophy that Glenn Fittick operates by. It is a quite light and approachable note for a 12-year-old. So on the palate, there is Ooh, just that... no burn whatsoever. Mm. It is utterly, utterly, completely smooth. That is sweet, sharp fruit. There is pineapple and mango in abundance. There's a little bit of spice. But this is mostly, yeah, it's it's uh, seesawing back between acidic and sweet fruit mm. flavors predominantly for me. It's almost one hundred percent bourbon influenced. There will be a just a sliver, a skerrick, mm. a scant portion of oloroso in here. Maybe a few other casks, but they will be microscopic. Mm compared to the ex-bourbon dominance of which yeah, this whiskey is built. I'm not still. getting the, um, usually either vanilla or the citrus, it so often comes with bourbon cast maturation. It's, it's all um, acidic fruit for me. Well, the vanilla is here. It's just so sweet. It's more of, you have to mm. think more vanilla ice cream right. more than vanilla pod. It's, it's very, very sort of a confected mm. thing. To call it, to call it easy drinking and approachable would almost undersell it. It yeah. is a whiskey for absolutely everybody. I've talked about unhateable whiskies in the past. This is one of them. I think the only person that could hate this would be someone that was so, so far down the hole of wanting complexity, albeit to the, pro to, to the point of unapproachability in their whiskey. Um, that person could maybe hate the Glenlivet. I don't think anybody else could. It's just such a good... Moorish whiskey um, that just it gives it gives it never takes away it never hides anything behind a a screen that you have to scrutinize it never it never makes you think twice or work anything out and sort of real whiskey heads won't like that so much but as I've said for my review of the Glen Livet 12 it's not for them. It's not a whiskey that's built for us. It's a whiskey that's built for everybody. Um, and everybody is a pretty large demographic to which we do not really fit into day by day. Um, so really you just have to take it on its own, on its own merits. And I, was, I think there's plenty of them there. I was stealing myself to be a little disappointed based on the 40% ABV strength. Usually you would expect 46 or so. But uh, no, this works at this strength yeah. too. If it was any more intense, those acidic fruit um, points would just be a little bit too sharp, I think. Well, if it got higher, I'm not sure it would get sharper. I was doing it again. Goodness oh. me. Goodness me. Unprofessionalism from, oh. the, um, mm. from the right side My of the side table. This is uh, a less not plain water. Never mind, never mind. We'll add more whiskey and the problem will be solved eventually. <laughs> Clears the nose and soothes the throat. Mm. Or so they say. Um, and now I've completely undermined my train of thought. Oh, I did this to Sorry, myself. I was, I was discussing how yeah, I thought that 40% was going to be too weak, uh, but yes, I was certainly yes. surprised. Um, based, on our, based on our contact with the Nardura, which is unshell filtered, yep. and much, much stronger with this, I think, if anything, was the Glenlivet 
bolstered it up to a 46 and unchill filtered and I think the unchill filtered would make the bigger difference here rather than the 46% it would be a much more it would be a rounded and you'd get a creaminess yeah it would add more savouriness to counterbalance with sweet sharpness yeah um, it would be more of a textural change and I'm not sure it would even necessarily benefit from it. The gland of it has been 40% for so long, it's so honed into being what it is, being this sort of fresh, sharp, um, refreshing almost whiskey. You know, it's a good whiskey, you just have, have a big old long tug of that on a hot day, and it is eminently refreshing. Really, it's out of season in the, in the increasingly chilly winter that we're mm. experiencing here in the southern hemisphere. Um, yeah, was that to go until filtered? I think they would have to really, they'd have to really take a long look at it um, to find out how to keep it the same. So I'm not going to begrudge anyone over there for leaving it at 40%. Um, mm. It's very, very much a um, an archetype, and trying to move it out of that while keeping its identity would be, uh, it would be a steep ask, I think. They've so, had time to master the art of making a whiskey, which is as good as it needs to be at 40%. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, the Glenlivet, it really only has one competitor, and that's their neighbours. Well, you know, the neighbours <laughs> a few kilometres away, but um, it's the Glenfiddich, and they do exactly the same thing. So um, I don't think they're going to win that war by suddenly turning into a turning into a craft whiskey. But their um, their Nadura series are something that um, the Glenfiddich is. By and large, by and large, they've done their own things here and there, but by and large they haven't done um, cask strength whiskies. So in that respect, um, the Glenlivet has sort of raised itself a little bit above the arena, but we will see what comes in the future. What we should do is assign scores yes. to this one so we can really, really do it justice, put it in its place. Um, if the Founders Reserve, as I sneakily look at our, our, our wee book there, um, I gave that one an 81, mm. Dave gave it a 78. That's a pretty beatable score for a premium yeah. Scotch whiskey, and it will be beaten. Um, this one is as everyone probably knew going in, a better whiskey than the Founders Reserve. That was kind of the problem. They, they jacked up the Founders Reserve to replace the 12 and went straight on to market it at the same price. And that's probably where they shot themselves in the foot, um, implying that it was a one-to-one -one sort of quality comparison to the 12-year-old, because it's not. This is a better whiskey than the Founders Reserve, much as I, I don't hate it as much as some people. This one is a fairly, fairly effortless 87 for me. Oh. It's, a, it's a really, it's a quality whiskey and it ends up in that quality bracket. Mm. It has almost no flaws. The only reason it isn't, you know, 100 points is that it doesn't really outdo itself in any, um, mm. you know, it may be faultless, but it's not very exciting, you know. Yeah. It plays it very, very safe. What do you think? Well me, also, it's obviously scoring higher than the Founders Reserve. It is a light but uh, eminently accessible whiskey. This is one that, as you've said, virtually anyone could enjoy. It's also almost peculiarly sweet and fruity. It is just uh, layer upon layer of sharp, sharply sweet, slightly acid fruits. It's a very tropical fruit salad. It's not much beyond that. It does that very well, though, so it earns an 84 from me. Well, there you go. Very tasty. Not hugely deep. It doesn't seem necessarily like a 12-year-old whiskey, but what it does do, it does eminently well. Mm -hmm. So, Glenlivet, 12-year-old, back in the mix. Yeah. Presumably we will see um, stocks in Founders Reserve spiral downwards now because, as we've proven, why would you bother um, if you had the choice? I don't know. Um, uh, that one may be sort of shuffled off, discontinued, I'm not sure. Maybe it will be reformulated to be a bit more exciting. Maybe they'll just drop the price. Uh, Stranger Things has happened. But um, one last thing, people do ask for what's a really, really good beginner's scotch whiskey. You're looking at one. Um, yeah. Between this and the uh, the old Glenfiddich 12, uh, these are these really are whiskies, like I say, unhateable. You really, really would have to try to bounce off these. They're just... They're whiskey for everybody, and I think everybody can enjoy them. So if you've got a whiskey, a whiskey noob that you need to mm -hmm. um, need to introduce to something, this would be a pretty good option. Drinkable AF.
Anyway, we will be right back with uh, another scotch, I think. I think. Yes, looking at the table, I can yes. confirm another scotch. So stick around. Um, keep your seatbelts, you know, in the upright position. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll end now before this gets worse. Slanger.